Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Abdul Rashid. We want to welcome you to another segment of uh, the Hot TV Show in the Hot Studios. Um, today, we have a very special, special gifted athlete with us today, a, a good, really good friend of mine by the name of Darvis Patton. A lot of us know him as Doc Patton. Uh, Doc, how you doing today? Oh, man, I'm fine, man. Uh, I heard Hot TV is doing a lot of wonderful things in the community. As well as having hip hop artists on, now they're getting uh, athletes on here. So when I was asked to come, man, I was elated just to be here. Well, look here, Doc. We we appreciate you being here with us today. Uh, you know, uh, we have a, a couple questions we're gonna get into and ask Doc. But really, enough with the small talk. We're gonna get into uh, our college career together because we attended TCU together. Uh, we're gonna get into his professional career and we're gonna get into what he's currently doing right now. Uh, Doc, tell us what's uh, what's going on with you right now, or we can start out with with our college uh, career together at TCU. Let's let's go back to our college career, man. We had a pretty good college career, man. We we had a, I guess we bonded so well because we had a pretty bad experience happen to us not once but twice while I was in college, man. As you recall, 2001, man, we uh, we were supposed to win the national championship and it came down to the four by four and all we had to do was get the stick around. Unfortunately, man, I our second leg dropped the stick and we ended up getting second, man. You know what? It it, it it's funny that. Doc says that like I'll never forget that. You know, if you once you go through an experience like that, you'll never forget nothing like that. And he's right. We uh, we uh, our second leg on the four by four got the stick knocked out of his hand, and it, it caused uh, caused us to to finish second. We finished uh, as a runner up in the national championship. But it's I mean, like I said, it's 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 just something that you'll never forget. But like he said, it didn't happen to us once. It happened to us twice. Tell us about the second time, Doc. Man, the second time, man, uh, we were up in Eugene, Oregon, and uh, we had vow we're going to win it this time, we're going to win it this time. As a matter of fact, uh, I want to win it so bad that I ended up doing a total of five events that day, man. Uh, you know what? Can I interject right there? He, he said that he did a total of five events, ladies and gentlemen, five events at the national championships. To, I did one, okay? <laughs> I, I was a triple jumper. I did one, and and, and – and I got an all all America status off of that. He did five, I, and I just want to just tell everybody uh, uh, a little something about Doc right now. Like I've been on a couple of uh, championship teams. Uh, I've been around a, a, a number of, of great athletes. But honestly, I'm not just going to say this because he's a good friend of mine. But he's one of the best all around athletes I've ever been around in my whole life. Like. He just told you five events. I was there in awe. You, you don't understand what kind of stress and strain it is on, on the human body to do five events. And um, the events were the 100, the 200, the the four by one. Um, which other one? Uh, it was the 100, 200. Actually, it was three rounds of the 100, right. two rounds of the 200, and uh, two rounds of the four by one. And I also did a, I took all six of my jumps in a long jump, which kind of takes a pounding on your body. So uh, that was bad. But to get to how we got second, that's why I kind of hurt so bad because I sacrificed myself to do all those events, knowing that we're going to win that championship. Not thinking, but knowing we're going to win. And then uh, right, right. once again, it came down to, I guess we called it our last event because we didn't have a four by four going in. Right, right. So we knew that uh, Kim Collins didn't win the 100, but he had gotten second. Right. And uh, so. He was going to win this 200, and I was just going to finish because I was already tired. I was wore out after doing all those events. So my goal was just finish no top eight. No doubt. Well, the the starter says, run to your mark, set, and Kim Collins falls start. Mm. And uh, I ended up getting third, man, and we ended up getting second. You, you know, and like you said, that's why I said it didn't happen once. It happened twice. So, I mean, I, like I remember when Kim falls started. Kim, he was he a was, uh, favorite to win the 200-meter dash. Um, but like I said, uh, Doc was also in the 200 meter dash. But Doc had did so many events; it took I know it had taken uh, taken a toll on his on his body. But I mean, one of the the best overall athletes I've ever seen in my life. And ladies and gentlemen, he turned pro in 2001. But 2003 is when is when it really took off for you. He I he was ladies and gentlemen, he was U.S. champ. In the 200 meter dash, he's uh, like like we said, two two uh, two time world champion, um, 
Olymp Olympic silver medalist. I mean, the accolades just go on and on. Doc, uh, go on and tell us about your, your a little bit about your professional career and how it's taken off since you turned pro in, in 2001. Well, like you said, I turned pro, pro in 2001 and uh, had to kind of uh, overcome a lot of trials and tribulations. Uh, I didn't think I, I I didn't take it as serious right. back in 2001, 2002, and then uh, I had an epiphany like if I if I really want to be good at this, I got to take it more seriously. So man, I stopped hanging out as much. I kind of changed my eating habits, man. Man, you was out with me, man. I stayed at your apartment, man. You remember I used to get up? Oh, after we used to go out, yeah. go practice at 9 in the morning. Well, I had to cut some of that out. Right. And uh, I, I saw a drastic change. Uh, so 2003, man, uh, I went to U.S. Championships. Uh, just more so just to have fun, man. I ended up winning 2003 World Championship. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, U.S. Championship. Right. Went over to Paris, Paris France, and where I, uh, I got a silver in 2000, I mean, 200. Right. And ended up getting a gold in a 4 by one and then uh, after that, um, some more trials and tribulation, I got injured. So I was kind of out of the scene for a year up until 2004, right. where I was uh, able to get a, which is my most proud accomplishment, I got a, a silver medal in the 2004 Olympics at Athens. Right. Right. And then once again, um, I got hurt. You know, I hurt my groin, hurt my hamstring, and uh, overcame that. And uh, this past summer, man, I came back on the scene, and I'm a 2007 world champion, 4 by 100 meter relay. Well, we've seen athletes come and go. You're still around. You're still pushing strong. You're still running real fast. You the, at the top of the world every year. What allows you to keep to keep like helps to help you stay in shape and, and keep pushing and, and, and achieving the success that you've been achieving? Yeah. Uh, well, first and foremost, man, I'm I'm a very blessed athlete. I'm very blessed. And then on top of that, man, I have been given a God given ability to go out and practice every day. But that's just the top part of it, which is most important. But you also have to work hard, man. And I'm not just saying that because it's the right thing to say. Literally, man, I had to work hard, man. It was times that I did not want to go to practice. It was times that my coach wasn't there. It was times where I was not winning races. I'm talking about finishing dead last in some events. And, man, that's, that can be a bit discouraging. But the um, thing is, I never gave up. And then um, I started to pursue my dreams. And then once I realized that I can actually do this and be good at it, uh, I continued to do it. And uh, that's kind of what I'm doing now. And, and it feels pretty good, man. Okay, uh, you talking about that's what that's what you're doing in the track and field now. What what are you currently currently doing? How's your life uh, going right now? What are you currently doing? Do you have anything going for yourself? Uh, I know uh, you're training. Uh, you started training already. What's going on? Are you going to run indoor season? And what else do you have uh, uh, going on currently? Uh, well, right now I'm uh, I'm I'm in the part of the season which you would call the fall training, which is my base training. I'm doing a lot of uh, Plyometrics, running up bleachers, running up hills, trying to gear up. Yeah, yeah, those, remember those days we did them together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm just trying to gear up for uh, this 2008 season, hopefully become a, a 2008 Olympian and uh, be a two-time Olympian, and that's very rare. So, uh, But coming up this upcoming season, man, uh, I'm actually, I plan on running a couple of meets down here in the University of Houston. So, uh, you know, if you don't have nothing to do on one of these Saturdays, come down to the University of Houston and check me out, man. Okay, okay. That's what we're talking about. Um, Let's see, Doc. Uh, do you have any advice that you want, would like to give the the little kids that that has dreams and aspirations of being a track star? Uh, and walk like it's safe to say in your shoes, since you, like I've said, he's he's you've done it right, you've done everything right uh, as far as taking care of your body. What advice can you give the kids that's watching the show uh, that might see this clip? Uh, what do you want to tell them? First off, it's plain and simple. Um, I can kind of sum it up, man. To me, don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do anything. I don't care what it is. It has. It doesn't have to be related to sports. Anything. It can be in the in the classroom. Anything that you're trying to pursue, don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything. And I think if you live by that, you can accomplish anything that you want to do. Hey, you heard it from an Olympian, U.S. Olympian, world champion. I don't know. The list goes on. You've heard it from the man. Well, Doc. Once again, we want to thank you for being in the high TV studios with us today. You know, it's been an honor and a privilege. Um, I got one more question for you, though. When, you, when your career is over in track and field, you've achieved all the accolades and, and acquired all the fame that you, you're going to acquire, um, how would you like to be remembered? How would you want people to remember Darvis Doc Patton? Wow, man, that's, a, that's an excellent question, man. I've I hadn't even thought about that, man. But now that you asked me the question, man, uh, honestly, I, I, I just want to be known as a, a honest guy, a hard worker, and I did everything right, and um, and I live right by God. And um, honestly, man, that's all I can come up with right now because 
I know I can sleep well or rest easy knowing that everybody thought that Darvis Patton, Darvis Doc Patton, was a hard worker. He was an honest guy. He was an overall good dude, man. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Need I say more?